Russia's vicious war in Ukraine rages on. The human costs have been enormous. Thousands killed, including children. Homes and cities reduced to rubble. Families are fleeing with no idea where they will sleep or eat or how they will feed their children. In short, it's a humanitarian crisis. Now, many of you know Samaritan's Purse Relief Organization, led by Reverend Franklin Graham. You may have even seen their volunteers in your neighborhood with chainsaws if your town was hit by a tornado or removing water from homes destroyed by floods. But Samaritan's Purse doesn't just help in the USA. They help nationwide, worldwide. And tomorrow, I will be in Poland on the Ukraine borders with Samaritan's Purse. The organization's DC-8 cargo plane is making its 19th trip to Ukraine and, as always, will be filled with medical and building supplies to drop off for distribution by their volunteers in Ukraine. Now, since the war broke out, Samaritan's Purse has helped more than 2 million people. They distributed more than 10,500 metric tons of food, using thousands of churches to help share those hot meals. They've also helped more than 2 million people get clean water, and they have also cared for nearly 14,500 patients in their field and medical clinics across Ukraine. Now, on its return trip this time, the DC-8 will carry Ukrainian refugees to Canada, as they've done before. And in Canada is where the Canadians have been graciously opening their arms to these refugees. I'm joined by Reverend Franklin Graham, who's on the phone and is in Alaska on another Samaritan's Purse program to help injured U.S. military vets and their spouses. Reverend Graham, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Greta, for having me. Reverend, um, one of the reasons this is possible, besides all the donations from people across the United States, across the world, is that you have volunteer churches or partner churches in Ukraine. Tell me what they do. Uh, Greta, we've got uh, over 3,000 churches that we work with, and uh, we have been so far distributing uh, thousands of tons, metric tons of food. And, you know, how do you distribute something like that? Uh, you've got to have partners. And these churches are our partners, and uh, they take the food and they distribute it to the people in their communities. Uh, same thing with our water filtration uh, programs. Uh, work with the churches and do it with the churches. And so uh, it's a great partnership. We've had this partnership in Ukraine for almost 30 years. Uh, these are wonderful people we've been working with, but to get the job done. And that, that makes all the difference. You have to have a network, and we've got a great network in Ukraine. All right. Well, in addition to having the network, the distribution network, um, and of course, I know I'm very familiar with, with Samaritan's Purse, is you have volunteers to so Samaritan's Purse, and you have full-time crew. And they, and basically, when when the the when a, cri a crisis happens, they move fast. So, give me an idea of like how you get the volunteers together and how you send your staff over there. Okay, we've got um, uh, trained. We've got the volunteers are first of all. We've got uh, trained medical personnel that uh, are, uh, these will be several thousand people that are across the United States that we have trained and worked with, and they, they have other jobs. But when we call them, uh, they will drop what they're doing, and they will, will come, and we will pay them, and they will work for us for a month, uh, two months, whatever the case may be. Uh, most of these are, are, are medical people. These would be doctors and nurses. And then we've got an army of volunteers who will just drop what they're doing and come volunteer with us. And, and it, you just you wouldn't be able to do this without having volunteers and people like this who are willing to do it. And, of course, as a, as a Christian organization, uh, we're all like-minded. The, the doctors and the nurses and the volunteers are, are all men and women that believe in God and believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And we, as we go, we, we go in Jesus' name. We, we don't want to help people just in the name of the sake of humanitarianism. We're doing in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ when we go into these places and show compassion, show love, but at the same time, real, real tangible help. I, I take it you don't have to be a Christian, though, to get help and care uh, from Samaritan's Purse. No, absolutely not. But we, we always want people to know that uh, Samaritan's Purse, we are a Christian organization, and that when we go, we go in Jesus' name. We never want to deceive people and think, uh, you know, we're doing something else when we're not. Uh, we're Christians, and uh, but we accept help from anybody and everybody uh, because uh, we're helping the people of Ukraine during this very difficult uh, conflict. And, Greta, this is going to go on for some time, and right now we're focusing on the winter. Uh, winter is coming. We've already ordered 
uh, tens of thousands of blankets. Uh, we're, we're beginning to take uh, shelter material, and on the BCA tomorrow we'll have shelter material uh, that will be going. That's that blue plastic you saw in Haiti and you've seen in other countries. Uh, so people that have had their windows blown out or the roof blown off, uh, they can put this plastic back up and, and, and be in shelter and, and keep the wind out, keep the cold out. So uh, we're beginning now to think about winter is coming. It'll be here just a few months, and we've got to prepare now. You know what I, what I find fascinating? Obviously, I've been to war zones. I've been to your field hospital in Iraq in a war. Um, I've been to one of your field hospitals in, uh, with you in March in Ukraine, is how everyone is so smart how to do this. The field hospital, for instance, was in, in, in Ukraine, was in the basement of a shopping center, so it was like built into a bomb shelter, the one I went to. So, I mean, these are very sophisticated you know, field hospitals that you set up. Uh, they are, Greta, and we've been able to treat uh, thousands of people, uh, and I believe it's uh, almost uh, 14,000 people that we've been able to treat so far. The amount of need is just breathtaking, um, how, much the, how much need uh, these people have. I mean, their lives have been turned upside down. Reverend Franklin Graham, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Greta.